Hi everybody, my name's Tony, and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program and we have an hour together for chair yoga. And as you can see, I'm back in the Everyday Counts building. We have a little construction going on, so you might see people walking around or hear some uh, noises, but hopefully not that much. So I'm glad you're here joining me. Settle into a place that's comfortable for you. That may mean seated up on something like I am. I'm sitting on a yoga block. You may be more comfortable on a chair to start with. Anything at all that suits your body is great. There's no right and wrong way to do any of this. This is all about learning to tune in to your own intuition and choose from there. So settling into that support underneath you, and you can be sat in any which way. I happen to be cross-legged because this is comfortable in my body, but you do what it is that you need. Settling into that support, taking a big breath in, and really allowing yourself to feel supported, sending all of your body weight down into that support. It's surprising how much we resist that on a moment by moment basis. So take a couple of breaths, and allow yourself to settle. Not only settle your body into that support, but settle your awareness, your mind, your heart into this moment by just paying attention to all the places that you're connected down to support. You might even notice the air on your skin You might notice certain sensations in your body. Trying to stay away from the stories that we do like to weave around everything that um, we notice and just stay present to what is without those stories as best as we can. And when you notice yourself being taken off by a story, no matter how long you've been there, don't berate yourself, just kind of giggle to yourself, there I go again and bringing it back to sensation of the earth, sensation in your body, notice your breath, notice how you're feeling. Settling any tension and tightness as best as you can, even by a little movement or changing things up once you've um, committed to a shape doesn't mean you have to stay there. Notice if there's a lot on your mind today, and that's fine. We don't need it to be any other way. We just need to build awareness to what is. Notice if there's a lot of emotions present. And again, we don't need to change things. We're just observing. Notice the energy level that you're working with today, whether you're super full of beans or not quite so much. Notice your breath. Starting to allow that breath to become a little more mindful in your own way. Consider breathing in and out through even nose. If that suits you today, if not, then no big deal. A lot of the time, just breathing in and out through the nose allows us to settle from that stress response into a calmer place, but only if it feels comfortable for us. Allowing the breath to be easeful. Noticing the rhythm of the breath. You can even count how long your inhales take and count how long your exhales take to get used to your rhythm. And this is a great thing to come back to during the practice um, when things get a little bit more challenging. So we're settling into that support underneath us. From that support, awakening through the spine, crown of the head is reaching 
Shoulders are soft and down. And the collarbones are wide. And from here, notice if there are little adjustments you can offer yourself for it to feel more comfortable. Same count of breath, if that still serves you, knowing you can change that count at any time. And take those hands down next to us, and maybe you need blocks to reach down towards the earth, or you have a chair there. I'm going to turn those palms up on an inhale from the elbows, inhaling up, exhaling down, keeping the movement steady within the breath. Option to stay here. Option to allow that movement to become a little bigger. Allow the arms to be an expression of the breath. So, a lot of the time we tend to allow that exhale to drop the arms down. Imagine that you're sitting in a jar full of honey and you're moving slowly through that honey. As if there's resistance there. Option to bring the hands at any height at the top of the inhale together, wherever that is, and exhale them down and round. Inhaling up, exhaling down, starting to warm up through the shoulders. On the inhale, we're lengthening through the spine. And on the exhale, there's that natural settling back down into that support. If there's another arm movement that suits you, go ahead. You can stay here. We're going to bring a slight twist into this. On the inhale, we're coming up. On the exhale, we're going to allow those hands to come down as we twist towards the right. Inhaling up to center, exhaling, twisting towards the left. Allow the movement to be yours. Just getting that gentle spinal rotation. Two more either side. Again, no right and wrong here. Change it up to suit you. One more. More or less, unless you're resting. And when you're ready, coming back to center and settling back down. Hands resting, rolling through the shoulders in your own way to settle any tension and back in the opposite direction. Take a breath in, exhale it out, soft and steady, settling down. From here, coming over onto hands and knees when you're ready. And if you're seated in a chair, I'm gonna take seated cat and cow, or you wanna stay seated in, um, on the floor, no big deal. Otherwise, we're taking are taking um, any softness under the knees that we need to, coming over onto hands and knees, spreading that foundation nice and wide, including the fingertips and thumbs spread wide. Knees can be a comfortable distance apart, and I'm drawing the belly in, drawing the heart up, and the head is neutral. Toes tucked or untucked, and from there, on an inhale, we're going to drop through the belly, lift the tailbone, lift the gaze, that's the inhale. Exhale, push through the hands and knees and we're rounding through the back body. Maybe the gaze comes towards the belly button. Inhaling, the gaze can come up. Noticing how your body feels here as it moves. And staying with that natural ebb and flow of the breath, the count maybe that you came up with right at the beginning. 
allow the movement to be guided by the breath. So we're not hanging out in stillness at one place or another. There's very little stillness here, in fact. We are moving most of the time, apart from the brief pauses at the top and the bottom of the breath. If wrists are sensitive, you can always come down onto forearms. No big deal. Take rests when you need to. Child's pose or any other movement. Coming back to neutral. So the belly's still drawn in. Push into the hands to lift the back of the heart. And from there, I'm going to take everything around in a circle. So, hips come over towards that right heel, over towards the left, and then we're drawing the shoulders forward. And again, this is hard on the wrists. Come down to forearms. Still drawing up through the belly, through the back of the heart. But allow this to be your own movement. So it's a big or a small a movement, just feel good. And then when you're ready, we're gonna switch up directions and notice how that feels. Keep the breath steady, easy, that same rhythm. Another three here, unless you're resting is always an option. Last one here. Coming back to center. And from here we're going to move those knees in towards each other. And again, forearms are always an option here. So, belly's drawn in, back of the heart lifting. And from here, all we're going to do is lift up through the left knee and foot. Patting the right knee if you haven't already, doubling over your mat if you need that extra support. Steady breath. We're going to start to circle through the knee, keeping that bend in through the knee. Circle in one direction. Don't worry about what the hips are doing here. So, the hips can open up to the side, keeping again that nice bend in through the knee. Getting that rotation through the pelvis, bringing the rotation all the way up through into the spine. That knee can get way up close towards your elbow and come all the way out, or it can be a small movement. And then we'll take it around in the opposite direction. Seeing if we can slow that down, rest if you need to, do every other one, keep the rest of your body as stable as possible. Counting the breath. Lost one here. I'm bringing the knee down, cat and cow, or any other movement that feels good. Same thing, other side. Patting this time the left knee if you haven't already. Hovering the right knee and foot. And then from here, keeping that angle bent into the knee, we're just circling. So this is a big movement through the hip joint option to allow that to get bigger. Don't worry about what's going on in the hips as long as it feels stable and steady for you. You can open those hips out. We don't have to keep them rooting down towards parallel to the mat. Forearms are always an option. Big or small movements as you like. Slow or as fast as feels good to you. There's going to be some places that feel less than steady. No big deal. One more. Pausing and taking it around in the opposite direction. You can always rest in between. Keeping the breath, your focus, as steady and as smooth as you can make it. As big or as small a movement to suit you. Two more. Two 
taking the right knee back down, cat and cow, or any other movements that suit you here. And then from there, we're going to be drawing the left foot forward, give it a little help as you need to, patting the right knee, toes tucked or untucked, whatever suits you. Once you have set up your foundation, which you can change at any time, hands come up onto the thigh and up we come into a low lunge. Once you're up here, adjusting everything so it's more comfortable, so it's sustainable. So if you're here and your knee is hurting and that's all you can think about, there's really no point being here. So pad and adjust and adapt for your own body. Once we're here, hands come to the support of your thigh or your hands on your hips to settle everything down. Fixing your gaze in front of you, inhaling and exhaling. From here, we're going to take that right hand to the left thigh. Left hand dangles down, but the collarbones are wide, and we have that alertness from our foundation, just like when we were seated. So root down into that, lifting from there. I'm going to lift up on the inhale through that left arm, switching the palm outwards as it comes back and round. Inhaling up, exhaling round. Now this can be a big movement, you can keep those joints easy or you can reach through the fingertips and notice as you're doing this where you feel this in your body. If you're feeling confident and stable here, the option is to take the gaze with that left hand. Three more in stillness, in movement. One more to go, bringing the hand back to support on your thigh, take a breath in, exhale it out, nicely done. Option to stay here, option to interlace the knuckles behind you. You can send your hands as if you've got patch pockets and jeans um, onto the back of your pelvis, drawing the elbows back. Interlace the hands, resting the knuckles on the back of the pelvis, elbows draw together. Ribs draw in. Option to stay here, option to reach the knuckles down towards the earth as the shoulder blades come towards each other. Lifting up through the heart, but we're lifting from the pelvis up through, especially the lower spine, rather than just curling back. And the option is to send the heart up towards the sky, lifting up towards the chin, up towards the ceiling. Keeping a micro bend in those elbows will open up through the chest. But again, front ribs drawn in, three breaths. Working on the core stability and that range of motion through the shoulders. Same breath count. On the exhale, the chin comes down, hands come back to support, taking the hands down in your own time, sweeping that left leg round and back. Any movements you need or option to rest in child's pose. Your child's pose, whatever feels comfortable, you can sit up on a bolster or a rolled, block, a rolled towel in stillness or movement. As you know where we're going, as we're coming back to the other side. When you're ready, 
If you're not already on hands and knees, that's where we're going. And then that right leg is coming forward, giving it a little bit of a help in hand if it needs to, patting that left knee as much as you need to. Your foundation is important here, so play around with how wide, how narrow, how long you want your stance to be. When you're settled, hands come up onto the right thigh. Settling in here again, playing with where it is you need to be, no right and wrong. Fixing the gaze, that'll help with balance. Rooting deeply into everything that is touching the earth. And from there, this alertness through the upper body, width through the collarbones, drawing the front ribs in. And this is simply a great place to stay. It's already challenging, it's already a balanced pose. If you want to add on, left hand to the right thigh. And then that right hand dangles down. Wide through the collarbones though, and again, those front ribs are drawn in. On the inhale, if you're adding that right arm, on the inhale, you reach up through the fingertips, thumbs coming back, and then we switch, opening up. Now this can be a small movement. You can keep those joints nice and easy, depending on what feels good, or you can reach Getting that range of motion through the shoulders, which we already warmed up earlier. Option to stay here. Option to take the gaze with those fingertips. If you feel stable and secure, getting that twist through the cervical spine too. Get another two here. Coming back to center. Taking anything if you need here or drawing the hands back as if you've got those denim jean pockets on those patch pockets and slide your fingertips in, drawing the shoulder blades together, opening up through the chest as the elbows reach towards each other, any amount. And those front ribs are drawn in so we don't over arch the back. Interlace the knuckles if you like, but the opposite thumb and first finger on top. Just to switch it up, it's going to feel a bit awkward. Knuckles can rest on the back of the pelvis and those elbows can be drawn towards each other any amount. Last option is to send the knuckles down towards the sky, uh, down towards the sky, down towards the earth. As you reach up towards the sky through the crown of the head, ribs are drawn in. And the last option is here is if your heart just hooked up towards the sky with a limp through the lower abdominals, chin, option to lift up unless you need your gaze fixed or the chin lowered for easy breath. You've got three breaths here. Expanding the breath into the same count. Last one, keeping a nice bend in those elbows to open up through the chest. On the exhale, the chin comes down, replacing the hands, back down to the earth, sweeping the right leg back, cat and cow or any other movement that suits you. And when you're ready, coming back, if not the first time or the second time, to child's pose. Big toes come towards each other. Seat comes back. You can rest, of course, on something. Supported um, child's pose on the hands, forearms, fists. Coming down all the way to the earth. If you have a block, you can use the block on the forehead. The reason that we like the forehead to be supported is because there's a nerve that runs through the center of the forehead called the vagus nerve, which is stimulated. If you put pressure on it, it actually reduces the stress response. In stillness or in movement, come back to your steady breath here and notice how you're feeling. Notice if your breath has changed, if you can bring it back to that steady rhythm. 
or if it's changed up and you feel like you have a steadier breath with a different count, allow that to change naturally. Staying here for as long as you like to rest. Or I'm going to come up to hands and knees and then up to standing when you're ready. So toes come towards each other, walking the hands back. If there's another way you want to come up, then please do it. And I will meet you standing. And here we are. So finding your feet at a comfortable distance to, for you. Palms towards me as you roll the shoulders down and away from the ears, but the collarbones are wide. And just like we did when we were seated or on our hands and knees, we root down to that support. Only this time it gives the sensation of maybe being on a sand beach that you could dig down a little deeper. And we root down to rise up through the whole of the body, feeling that alertness through especially the upper body, but also through your legs, all the way down to your fingertips, the crown of the head reaching. And take a few steady breaths here, coming back to your natural rhythm. Mm -hmm. And from here, I'm gonna inhale, up from the elbows, exhale down to start with, just getting used to moving once again with the breath. Option to stay here, option to start to reach those arms up, joints can be easy, or hands can come up any height, exhale down through the center of the body, inhaling, sweeping the fingertips, and exhaling, settling in. Taking another few breaths here. Last one. And when we come up, we're going to take the right wrist with the left hand. From here, Rooting down, rising on the inhale, and drawing the right fingertips over towards the left. Keeping a nice bend in those elbows, especially if there's any numbness and tingling, just release that a little. You can even rest your hands on top of your head, or fingertips to or on those shoulders. Your choice, lots of options here, but we're reaching from the floor, reaching up through the crown of the head and over a little towards the left side, lengthening through the whole of the right side, allow this movement to feel comfortable in your body. If you've gone too far and the breath is halting, then don't go so far. On an inhale, when you're ready, we're coming up to center, releasing the hands, roll through the shoulders, and then back in the opposite direction. From here, other side as we reach up, right hand comes to the left wrist, bending through the elbows and knees to reach up and over. Now you have all kinds of different options as you do this. Any numbness, tingling in the hands, please take them down. But we're finding that connection down through the left foot to reach over so we get this length through the left side, opening up through the armpit so we're not facing the earth there. A couple of breaths here. Bent elbows, straighter, your choice. And then rooting down through both feet to rise, allowing those hands to come down and releasing any tension from there. From here, I'm going to draw the feet in towards center. And as you do this, fix your gaze in front of you somewhere that is not moving. That's going to help with balance. Hands come to the hips. And this is already quite a challenge right here as we narrow and shorten our stance. 
Option to stay here, we're down through the left foot, get those toes spread nice and wide, as if you're planting a tree root downwards, and bend through the right knee, lifting the heel. Now from here, with your hands on your hips, notice if one hip is hiked up, and see if you can settle that down to a neutral place. Great place to be right here, fixing your gaze, steadying your breath, that same count. Or option to take the knee out towards the side. Again, big toes and the ball of the foot is on the floor. You can stay here. You can take the heel on top of the left foot, connect it downwards, and you've got a drawing in towards the midline of your body, rooting to rise. Should be fairly familiar in your body. Or, with the toes on the floor, taking the sole of the right foot to the inner left ankle, also a great place to be. Notice if your hips are shifting all the way to the right and draw that left hip back. This is not an opportunity to try and get the knee as far open as we can. We're trying to stay within the natural bounds of the body. Rooting down through that left foot, option to take the right sole of the foot up to the um, shin. The shin is drawing in towards the sole of the foot. The sole of the foot is drawing in, so we have that connection. Rooting down through the left leg to rise up. So we've got that midline connection once again. The last option is to take, ugh, take that um, foot up into the inner thigh, just not the knee joints. We don't want to push that left knee out. Once again, if you're noticing that one hip is hiked up, then see if you can even those hips out. Fixing your gaze. Option to take a wall next to you or a chair. If you want that for support, go ahead. Spreading the left toes out. And then from here, the option is to stay with your hands on your hips, coming back to that steadiness of breath. Option to stay here, option to take the hands into heart center. Option to stay here, option to take the arms out. First finger and thumb, that's the mudra of focus. Pushing the thumb and the first finger towards each other will help with balance. Any other mudra option that you have here, go ahead. No right and wrong, choose what it is that works for you. You've got three steady breaths, the same count in and out that you've had or that suits you now. Settle the thoughts, settle the stories and the inner dialogue. Two more breaths, more or less. Get that connection downwards to grow your tree through your fingertips or the crown of your head. On the exhale, the hands come down and releasing that right leg. Bend through the knees, hula hooping through the hips in your own way, and back in the opposite direction, coming to the other side. So, without getting into how that went, sweep it away, all of the thoughts about that side, how successful it was, all the rest of it doesn't matter, it's over and done with. Feet are drawing in towards each other. This is a great place to stay. Great, especially if you know that there's um, a big difference in this side of your body, please honor where it is that you need to be. Root down through those right toes, so spread them nice and wide like you're uh, rooting down just like a tree. Lift the left heel, bend the left knee if that's where you're going. Hips are facing forward, kind of like headlights on a car. Keeping those hips facing forward, notice if one hip is hiking up or not and see if you can kind of even those out as best as you can. And then, keeping the hips facing forward, we turn out with the left knee. Option to stay here. Option to connect the heel to the top of the right foot. Connection is downwards to rise front. So we get that midline connection Option to stay here or the inner left um, sole of the foot is connected to the right ankle but the toes are on the floor. Great place to stay, especially if you're feeling unstable, fixing your gaze, steady the breath. Option to take the um, left foot 
into the right shin. The right shin pushes back just as firmly as the left foot draws inwards as well. So you've got that connection inwards, that dynamic tension. And then the option, of course, is to take the foot up to the upper thigh, just not on that right knee joint, because if you fell out and you push that knee joint, we don't want to um, um, allow that to be at any risk. Connecting downwards to, through the right foot, rising from there. Any help you need for support, take it. Hands on your hips and you're settling down the breath. So balance here is a reflection of what's going on inside. So settling the thoughts, settling the breath, that'll settle the nervous system. Hands can come into prayer. First finger and thumb, mudra of balance and focus. Any other thing that is comfortable for you. There's no right and wrong way here, but wherever you choose, we're here for three breaths. And if you fall out, don't worry, just come right back in. Yoga is a practice, it is not a perfect. Settle the breath, notice the inner dialogue. Ooh, there we go. More or less, one more full breath. Hands come down, and then we release that left leg. Bending through the knees, hula hooping through the hips in your own way, and back in the opposite direction. Coming back to mountain pose. Palms towards me, or hand on belly, hand on heart, soften the gaze, or close the eyes, and come back to the breath. Notice. If you're being gentle and kind to yourself, the only thing you need to be aware of right now is the connection down to the earth, how we feel, and the steadiness of the breath. You pick what it is that you want to focus on and stay there for three breaths. Maybe even noticing how you're breathing, your body's breathing into the palms of your hands. It doesn't matter what you're focusing on but pick something. Last one here. Nicely done. Releasing the palms, opening your eyes if they were closed. And I'm going to meet you all the way down on the earth. See you there. So from here, we're going to come all the way down lying on our back, knees to the sky, feet to the floor. After all that external rotation, if you need any softness underneath you, please take it. Any pillows behind the head, if that feels more comfortable for you and less stress on your throat, please take what it is that you need. From there, we're gonna draw our right knee in towards us, give that a little hug always adjusting and adapting anything making sure that left foot is your foundation take a few deep breaths here and on that exhale drawing the shin in towards you as if to push the air out on that exhale last one here mm -hmm. From here, right hand to right knee. Keep that left foot on the floor. Option to take, wing the left knee out so you're on the outer blade of that foot. Or if you feel comfortable, then you can extend that left leg out. Both feet are flexed here. Left arm out in the cactus or a T that's going to um, connect the upper body um, more, um, it's going to stabilize the upper body towards the earth. Right knee comes upwards from here, circling through the right hip joint. Big or small movements as you like, but still connecting to the breath. You can allow that hand to guide you, or if you don't need it, you can keep both arms 
palms down on the floor to cat kiss or tea and that will allow you to get a little more movement but more is not better here what we want is the steadiness the smoothness notice where you're feeling this again always working with the body not against it and then we'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction when you're ready Notice what's happening in your shoulders and the back of your pelvis. There'll be some movement there, but trying to keep it as minimal as possible so we really isolate the movement in that hip joint. One more. And then when you're ready, we draw that right knee back in. Left foot comes back to the floor, knee to the sky. Crossing the outer right ankle on top of the left thigh. The further away that left heel is, the easier that'll be in the right hip. The closer it is towards your seat, the more challenging it's gonna be. As you settle this, notice once again, if one hip is hiking up, and if it is, see if you can come back to a neutral pelvis with that right knee out. And again, that might mean that you have to adjust that left foot. Option to stay here, especially if you're already feeling this in the right hip. Option to draw that left leg in, taking hold of the side of the left thigh behind the left knee or even in front of the shin, threading the hands through um, into thread the needle. Depends on the length of your bones and the way you put together here. So both feet are flexed if the feet are up off the floor, especially that right foot to protect that right knee. And we're breathing here. So what um, a lot of people do is they try and get that, as, um, that left thigh as close and towards you as possible. See if from the back of your head all the way down to the base of your tailbone, you can root your spine down to the floor, keeping the hips as best as they can, even in the body. So one is not hiked up, so you're not kind of twisting at a funny angle. And we're breathing. The breath is still that steady breath. If you're holding your breath, probably doing a little bit too much, so releasing. Again, more is not better here. We're breathing into that right hip. You may also be feeling it at different places, so be mindful and offer yourself um, the options where your body feels safe being. And we feel safe, we know we're safe because the breath is steady. And then when you're ready after the last few breaths, you're gonna slowly release that, taking the, right, the left foot to the floor if it's not already there, arms coming out option to stay here you've got a whole lot of twists here so any safer iliac um, issues going on what you're going to do is connect those feet down towards the earth shift the hips to the right and draw both knees to the left any si joint issues that's where you're you are option to stay here in the figure four keeping the shoulders rooted and we're going to connect over towards the left side, allowing that whole hip to go over. If you want to, you can simply cross the legs and bound roots here. You can even tuck that lost um, foot. Um, under, I can't even think which foot that is tapped around my leg. The right foot tapped around the left leg. It really doesn't matter. And we're taking those bound roots over to the left. There's a whole lot of different feelings there in the twist. Keeping those shoulders connected to the earth is important when the twist is in the lower body. Option to take that gaze over the right shoulder. Always changing and adjusting something. The nice thing about kind of bound roots is that you can use that right foot on the floor to support you if you don't have a bolster or support there. And if this doesn't feel right for you, play with it. Choose your twist as you feel right. And if there's another twist that I haven't 
gone through that you prefer, then go ahead and do that. Remember that this is your practice, nobody else's. Steady, slow breaths, really tuning into your body and giving yourself the option to change things up, to adapt, to adjust things. And if you're done and you just simply want to rest, then please pay attention to that too. Go ahead. Otherwise, the gaze comes to center when you feel ready. Knees come back to center, and if you shifted your pelvis, the pelvis comes back to center as we take both feet to the floor, knees to the sky, readjusting yourself in your own way. Take a big breath in. Exhale, connect down to that support behind you and underneath you. Left knee draws in, a little flex in that ankle. Inhaling, feeling the belly and chest expand. On the exhale, draw the thigh in towards the chest, pushing the air out. Steadying the breath. Last one, you can stay as long as you like there. From here, releasing the left ankle on top of that right thigh and the knee wings out with a flex in that ankle to protect the tendons and ligaments in the left knee. Oh, no. Knee, um, coming back to that knee being drawn in, we're gonna take that left hand onto the left knee, right knee coming out towards the side or lengthening down. If it's lengthened down, then you've got to flex in both ankles here. Right arm comes out so the upper body is stable and still and we're gonna to start to circle through that hip joint. Big or small movements, your choice. You may notice that as the pelvis is rocking, it might feel better to have that right leg out towards the side to counteract that or not. You choose, you can let the hand come along for the journey or if you feel you don't need that, then both arms can be connected down to the earth, giving you a little more stability. Really notice what's happening here. This is pretty much what we were doing when we were on our hands and knees, but gravity is working in our favor here. Steady and smooth movements. And then when you're ready, you are going around in the opposite direction. And again, more is not better. So keeping that steady breath, keeping the movement as easy and fluid as you can make it. Always paying attention to what your body is telling you and adjusting things. Even if you need to rest and sit something out, please do. Next time that knee comes in, we're gonna keep it there. Right foot comes to the floor, and now, I'm not getting ahead of myself now, now we're gonna cross the left ankle over the top of the thigh. Flex in that left foot, so we've got, again, we're protecting that knee, great place to be. Option to adjust that right heel in or out, depending on what feels comfy for you. And the option is to draw that right thigh in. You can take the hand to the side of the leg, underneath that knee pit or in front of the shin, depending on what feels comfy for you. Both feet are flexed if they are up off the floor. And notice here, if you're really curling everything in, see it from the crown of your head, chin tucked in, so the base of your skull is rooting to the earth all the way down to your tailbone. So it's almost like you're imprinting your spine into the mat. And notice how that changes things. And it doesn't have to be right for your body. If something else suits you, then please take that into consideration and move in your own way. Inhaling and exhaling. We're breathing into the left hip or wherever it is that you're feeling sensation, always staying at a sensation level that suits you more is not better here. When you're ready, releasing that right foot down. You've got a whole lot of options here because you've got a whole lot of twists coming. Any SI joint issues, we're taking those knees down towards each other, feet to the floor, shifting the hips to the left, 
and keeping those knees connected as we bring it over. Otherwise, alternatively, taking that entire figure four shape, shifting the hips to the left a little if you like, over towards the right, you can take a block, a bolster, anything if you have handy underneath that foot for support. A lot of people don't like this twist because it feels weird. So, bound roots, keeping the legs crossed, and of course you can do the double bind if that's there for you. Um, or it's comfortable for you, no big deal. And then we bring the whole shape over to that side. And the great thing about round roots, I find, is that top leg can support you wherever you are. But again, suit yourself with what it is that feels better for you. Play around, choose a few, and settle on something that works for you today. Gaze can come over that left shoulder if that feels comfortable in your neck. And then notice where you're holding tension. Take a big breath in and release that tension out. Mm -hmm. Allowing tightness and discomfort to ease away from your body. And if you're building tightness and tension here, change something up, come out of the movement or shape if that's better for you, you get to choose. Keep the breath at steady count. Stay here for as long as you like. Or the gaze comes to center. The knees come to center. And then wherever you were, we're settling the pelvis back down. Readjust yourself, coming into relaxation. So you can stay here, knees to the sky, feet wide, knees towards each other, so you've got a little tent there, or any other relaxation pose that suits you. And don't forget, relaxation in yoga does not have to be on your back, facing the ceiling, um, all spread out like a starfish. It can be your own way, on your belly, on your side, on your bed, on your couch. So as you get settled in, I'm going to come up to a seat to guide you. Remember, no right and wrong here. This is your practice. You get to decide what feels best for you. Take a breath in. Settle the breath down. You can either take a few long breaths out like a sigh or take an inhale, hold right at the top and release tension from your body. Keep the held breath, inhale again, all the way to the top of your breath. Release the tension in your body, one more. Sip in. You probably don't have so much room now. Exhale it out like a sigh. Releasing. And with the breath, releasing. Allow the breath to come back to its own natural cadence. Allow your body to settle into that support deeply underneath you, releasing tension, tightness, any holding around your bones, your joints, your inner organs, allowing your muscles to release and relax and loosen. Allow the expression on your face to soften as the muscles also feel easy and soft. Allow your awareness to soften but also expand within you. Allow 
the thoughts to come and go as they please, feeling little to no attachment. Stay here for as long as you would like. Tune my voice out if you wish to stay longer. If you wish to finish your practice, starting to become aware of your environment. Notice the sounds around you, the temperature of the air. the support underneath your body. Settle your awareness to your breath when you're ready. Taking more mindful breaths in and out in your own way, your own time. You can stay as you are to finish up or in your own way start to move and awaken your body, finding yourself over the next few breaths in a place where you would like to finish your practice today, whatever that may be, no right, no wrong. Notice if you're telling yourself it has to be a particular way and see if you can let that go, that expectation. Wherever you are settling in now to a place that feels comfy, taking a gesture with your hands that feels right for finishing up today. Take a breath in when you're ready. Exhale, draw your chin down towards your chest and just tune in. Feel the echo of your practice in your body, your mind, your emotions, your spirit. And thank yourself sincerely for taking this time to practice. From my heart to yours, namaste.